first, uh, I want to I apologize for commandeering your faculty meeting, uh, although maybe, maybe you should be thanking me. Nothing against Mrs. Mazetsky, but, uh, but, but thank you for the time and, and thank you for being here. I, I think you've obviously heard um, the DOH uh, has completed their report, the report that they've been working on for <coughs> two years now as a result of a press made by the DTA. They actually contacted us and requested to come down and um, share the results with you. It wasn't us calling them, it was them calling us and saying, can we come down and go to a faculty meeting? We obviously said uh, yes, we can. Um, so what we have is uh, the hard copies of the reports are on the way in. If you didn't grab it, you can certainly grab it. The OH has a PowerPoint presentation and a Miss Falkey points to get us through the report. The hard copy that you are viewing now will be posted on our website um, at 5 o'clock this evening. And we are also videotaping the, uh, the meeting tonight, so those that could not come um, can view it at, at a later day. Okay? Just to answer any of those questions, and quite, and as I said that, please do not videotape yourselves here. We're, we're going to provide that videotaping. This is a faculty meeting, and we will make it available. We should see it at a later day. Okay? I uh, would like to now introduce and turn the meeting over to Dr. Lewis Michael. Uh, who I think will introduce her colleagues and then uh, make a presentation. I think we're going to be followed by a question and answer period. Okay. Well, sure, thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here in person. We've been talking with um, your school administration now for uh, a couple of years. I think most, can you hear me okay? Yeah. I think most of you are aware that there's some history here going back to the summer of 2017 um, when, when the um, Suffolk County Health Department first um, contacted us and your school administration just about the same time. So that's when this started. Um, I'm Betsy Lewis Michael and I work at the Center for Environmental Health at the State Health Department. Um, I work very closely with our cancer surveillance program and I've got the director of that program, Ora Weinstein, with me here today. And I've also got Pat Fritz, who is, works in a Bureau of Toxic Substance Assessment um, in the Center for Environmental Health. So they'll help me when it comes to questions and answers. So concerns about a variety of health endpoints among faculty, staff, and students were brought to our attention in the summer of 2017. And we reviewed quite a bit of information that um, was gathered, not just about faculty and staff, but about um, students as well. Um, and as you know, there are concerns about um, potential environmental exposures. There was also some um, air sampling that was done by a consultant that one of my colleagues um, reviewed and we provided some information about that back to your school as well. We responded to the Suffolk County Health Department with a commitment to look at cancer among faculty and staff um, for a couple of reasons. Um, primarily, we have a really good database. It's comprehensive, it's accurate um, for cancers because we have a state cancer registry that mandates the collection of data about cancer. So I'm jumping back now to these concerns that were fought, first brought to our attention that included students as well. And the kinds of um, problems that were being reported for students are just much harder for us to do a valid um, review of the way we can for cancer. So we decided to f that we really wanted to focus on these concerns about cancer among the faculty and staff. We got assistance from the Belfort Teachers Association and again from the South Country School District. <coughs> Our cancer registry, um, mandated by law, cancer records when somebody sees an oncologist and is diagnosed, those records 
um, end up in a central cancer registry that's really carefully pulled together and information is reviewed and we can then use that data for a variety of purposes. But we don't have complete occupational history for people. So we can't, for example, on our own, figure out with certainty who among these cases that we know about who worked at a particular school. So the Belcourt Teachers Association was a really important part of this with giving us information. They worked with Aura to provide information about cancer cases that they were aware of. The cancer registry is used to confirm those cases for additional details about diagnoses, the age of the person at diagnoses, the timing of the diagnoses, and a variety of additional information depending on the cancer type about details of that cancer, for example, the stage of diagnosis, if that's relevant. There's a lot of information in the registry. So just really quickly, methods, if you've skimmed through the report already, I think this kind of follows the order of the report. We confirm the cancer cases that were reported to us, but then, in order to do more with that information, we need to estimate the size of the population that the cases came from. And that population includes teachers who are currently here, but also teachers that were formerly here and, and staff. They could be retirees. So Aura worked with your school district to try to come up with the best estimate that she could of the size of that population from which the cases were drawn in a way that you would do when you're coming up with a rate for something. So using the details about the, what, you know, how, what proportion of the staff are male, what proportion are female, something about the age distribution, the turnover rates, um, or it used this in order to figure out what we call an expected number of cases. And that expected number of cases is based on the standard, what we call standard rates in the general population. And for comparison purposes for a population here on Long Island, we use the rates of cancer for each different type of cancer, the rates per population in our statewide population. Um, and for appropriate comparison with Long Island, we, we use New York State excluding New York City because it's a so more similar um, uh, ethnically, uh, racially ethnically to Long Island to use um, New York State excluding New York City. So that was what was used here to come up with a sense of what the expected number of cases would be. <clears throat> One kind of methodological point that I'll make here, but I'll talk more about it in a minute, is that when we get to the point of comparing that expected number to the actual observed number, we honed in on a 14-year time frame, 2004 to 2017. So now I'm going to go on to how we, how we looked at results from this work. Cancer cases were reported for 38 people, and by using our cancer registry, we were able to confirm cases for 36 tumors in 32 people. And um, we can talk more after about the characteristics of some of the cases that were not able to be confirmed. There was one person in that <clears throat> group whose cancer was diagnosed before they had started teaching um, at the school. So because we we're focusing on the school population, we took that case out. So it was 35 tumors in 31 people. But those cases were diagnosed over a really long period of time, 1980 through 2017. But most of them were diagnosed more recently, since 2000. Because we're assuming that the reports from the Teachers Association for cases that had occurred would be much more accurate in the recent time frame, we honed in on this shorter time frame of 14 years, 2004 to 2017, which and that's when the majority of the cases that were reported were, had occurred. So confirming the cases, there were 13 different types of cancer, breast, colorectal, lung, endometrium, malignant myeloma of the skin, bladder, ovarian, and some other types. 
Um, breast cancer was the most frequent type, and most people were age 50 or over at the time of diagnosis. Using, using all that information that I talked about um, a few slides ago, an estimate was made of the number of cases expected, and it was 29.9. Um, cases obviously don't come in fractions, so we'll call it 30 cases expected. Um, 22 in females and about 7 in males were expected. And looking at this time frame, this 14 year time frame, there were 22 cases confirmed. 19 in females and 3 in males. Um, and 7 cases of breast cancer were observed versus six and a half, so between six and seven expected. One of the things that um, Aura does when she looks at the cases, she doesn't just look at the types, she looks carefully at the age distribution. She looks at the specific types to look for anything particularly rare. Um, anything among the cases that's a bit unusual but that maybe is in common among the ones reported for teachers um, and staff of the school. And these patterns um, that she looks for led to no observation of an unusual pattern. Um, the age distributions were about what would be expected. Not There weren't a lot of cancers in unusually young people, for example, um, or young people with unusual like late stage diagnoses. Um, and the numbers themselves that I just pointed out, the 30 expected versus 22 observed, th that clearly shows us that we don't have evidence of an elevation of cancer amongst, among the staff. Also, we, don't, we did not have evidence of an unusual pattern. We, we look at both because we know that the numbers, you know, we know that it's not perfect, the number that were reported to us, certainly there were some cancers that were missed. But the difference between the 30 expected and the 22 observed indicates to us that we're, we're quite confident that we don't see an ele we don't see evidence of an elevation. So the next slide is our is our contact information, and you know we're here to you know to discuss and answer your questions. And um, there might be some people who want to speak to us about something more personal, and so we'll stick around at the end for that as well. So just in case there are people who would rather speak. Um, more personally at the end. So. I'm going to grab some water. <laughs> so, can you explain in a little more detail why? Just, can you just speak up so everybody can? I'll try to repeat it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> can you explain in a little more detail why you only started at 2004? When we looked over the entire set of um, cases um, reported to us, the 36, it started off, it was over a 38 year period. And if we had come up with an expected number of cases for such a long period of time, um, we, would have, we would have skewed this project towards not finding any elevation because staff turnover, people retiring, people getting older. We wanted to key in on the time period for which the majority of cases had been reported to us. So I'll stick, say that again another way. I mean, the question is why did we restrict ourselves to that most recent 14 year period, which you know, might raise suspicions that somehow we, we had played with the data. But actually we were trying to maximize our our ability to find a problem if there was one, because we assume that in that most recent time period, that's when the reports that were coming into us, because people know each other, they're hearing about what's happening, not just to current staff, but former staff, that that most recent time period, we'd have the most complete information about cases that had been diagnosed among the faculty. And also by um, using a shorter time frame, our estimate of the expected numbers would be a, is a lot smaller than if, if we had looked at that whole 38 time year time period, we would have expected a very large number, but in comparison to the people's ability to know who those cases were, you know, they could be 
long gone, long gone, um, not part of the social kind of group anymore. And so we wanted to hone in on the time frame that would give us the best ability to see if there's a problem. Yeah. Uh, do you know if there have been any studies with the community around Frank Bloom in terms of the same type of study? Um, the health department did a cancer incident study of, I, I don't remember if it was census tract based or zip code based. Census tract. census tract based. It was done in response to concerns about Brookhaven landfill but it was released in the early 2000s. Um, the concerns about Brookhaven landfill as a potential source of exposures um, go back a long time. So there was a cancer incident study done for the, for the area specifically around the landfill um, and released, I think it was released in 2005. That's probably available on our website. Right, right. We can we can provide a link to how somebody would find find that study. We didn't bring copies of it tonight, but right. Um, yeah, these these. I'll just make a comment. Um, these cancer incident studies. I think any of you who followed the news for the last 10, 15, 20, 30 years on Long Island, there's always been concerns about cancer on Long Island um, and in the rest of the state. One in Two men, one in three women, are expected to be diagnosed with cancer at some point in their lifetime. You know, it's a stark statistic, and it's actually going up because, you know, people are now no longer dying of some of the things that are at younger ages that they used to. And as we survive and live longer, um, cancer is a bigger and bigger risk factor as, you, as we age. And one in two men, one in three women means that Every family is touched by cancer, and some families are touched, you know, to, in some communities to the degree that people truly see, they perceive um, that things look, it looks unusual. So over the years, um, Aura's program, and I've worked with her on many of these studies across the state, we use our resources to try to understand is cancer elevated or particular types of cancer elevated in certain areas and they're, they're tough studies to do because sometimes we'll find an elevation but we don't know if it's just by chance um, and finding the actual if we do find something unusual in terms of a pattern of cancer it's very hard to then go further and figure out why um, so expected number so sometimes it's hard to know what to ask because it gets kind of complicated here. Alright so so there was a lot that went into the calculation of number of expected cases. We got good information from the school district um, from their employee database. Um, we had to make some limitations. The employee database only covered direct employees, there, there's a number of people working at the school on contract, we didn't have good information on that so we had to exclude them. We didn't include substitute teachers because we thought the time that they spent in the classroom was variable and we had no idea exactly, you know, it varied very much from teacher to teacher so we wouldn't know exactly how long they had actually been here. Um, so, you know, we looked at people who had been we looked at cancers occurring from 2004 to 2017, but we, had an, we got an estimate of everyone who had worked here since 1974, 1974 being the year when the landfill opened, since we were concerned about the landfill. So we estimated, you know, how many people, at what ages, and what sex distribution were living there, um, or were working here 
from 1974 on, we had estimates of retirees and people who had left, so we also included them. Um, and then, you know, we considered that they, you know, they might have left in the 70s or 80s, and all the time they were aging, getting older. So cancer depends a lot. Your, your chance of getting cancer depends a lot on your age, with, with rates and risk going up as you age. So we, you know, we considered their ages and how they aged over time. Um, we also, you know, some of the teachers might have been old when they retired years ago, so we did cut it off at a certain age, um, the average life expectancy. We, we didn't have any information on who might still be alive and who might have died, so we just assumed everybody died at the usual life expectancy. Um, so it, it was quite complicated, I know, you know, and, and it, is, it is an estimate that's done the best for available information, but we made some assumptions, I think they were reasonable. But it is an estimate, and, um, and so we, we realized that, that for the cases that we actually identified, that was dependent on them being reported to us. And there were probably additional cases among former teachers and staff that, that the community didn't know about, and so we wouldn't have any information about them. That's one of the reasons we wanted to stick to the later time period, because we thought the, the information would be more complete. We'd have a greater chance of detecting an elevation if there was one. Yes. But doesn't that affect the latency period then? For uh, the teachers that were here in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s that got diagnosed then, that would have met the latency. If you're not looking at that, then that would have that would change the results. Well, the thing is, with latency, it's a very important point with cancer. Um, if you get cancer from a certain exposure, usually it doesn't develop right away. There's right. an extended latency period. So if somebody has started working, had been working here in 1974, you might not, they might not see any cancers related to, to being here until the, until the 80s or the 90s or the 2000s. The thing is, we, we wanted to get the best estimate we could. So, um, you know, or, or even later. So we, we, we focused on the most recent time period where we had the best information. If we'd gone back further, we would ex have expected much many more cases, but we didn't think we'd be able to identify them as well. I just want to make sure that, that I made it clear that that time period, though that's the time period in which the diagnosis occurred, the person could have taught here much earlier. Right, but right. my point is that some of the diagnoses were made earlier mm -hmm. in the 90s, which would the, the latency period from when the landfill was put in, you know, right, right. so that's not, I mean, right. just a little confused about that. Right, right. Did your study only include the teachers or the people in the surrounding community? It was teachers and staff at the school. time period that a person worked here and whether they were diagnosed. So if we had, did we have a higher number of staff members who worked here, say from, from uh, like say 1985 to 2000? Was that a higher number of staff members diagnosed if they worked here during that time period? I, I didn't look at that specifically. One thing I did look at was um, the time since they started working here and the time that they developed cancer. Um, I didn't look at specific time periods, but the, the, the elapsed time. And, and most of them had been working here for, or had, 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 were diagnosed 10 or more years after starting to work here. Right, right. Is there a way with the data that you have to determine if there was a time period that people were working here that had a higher rate? I think we could do that. Yeah, we, we have the employment histories of the people. And, and if you have the, the numbers already, is that something that you think could be? I, I, th I think we can look at that. I, I think I, I would be interested in something like that. Yeah, we can go back and look at that. Just, re just really quickly, um, these do get complicated because it's yeah. the numbers I, based I on turnover and people are aging at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, but 
So one way to think about it is that the original cases were over a 38-year period, and then we honed in on a 14-year period, but it was, in terms of dates of diagnosis. But during that 14-year period, that's when the majority of the cases that had been reported to us occurred. Yes. So, so if we're looking at it just simply on the observed versus expected, um, I, I think that that was a very fair way to try to see if there's a problem. But as far as yeah, checking the late, kind of checking time between employment and diagnosis, yeah, I think that's something that we'll have to look back at. Right. Kind of a bit more qualitative, looking at subgroups. Yes, yeah, exactly. Good, good, like good point. The teachers yep. who were here during this time period, was yep. there a yep. higher incidence in that yep. group? That's, I think, something that we would appreciate finding right. out. Sure. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, it's yeah. a good point. Yeah, if people have ongoing questions once they've read this, in more detail, you might have questions that are more specific than you're coming up with right now. Feel free to reach out with us, and if there's ongoing concerns, we're, we're the health department is still there. We will still be there, and also we'll stick around now in case anybody wants to come and, and talk I to think us some more. Yeah. I think I'll add to that. If you have mm -hmm. questions, if you could funnel them through my office, and we'll compile it and send it. This way, everybody's privy to the same questions and the same answers, so we can do some consistency in that regard. Okay. And I want to I thank Dr. Lewis Michael, and I also want to thank, uh, we have a few trustees with us this, this evening, because uh, they wanted to see the hear the report's results as well. We have Trustee Trent in the back, Trustee Park, <coughs> and front, President Hayes also, so I do want to recognize them. And I want to extend my thanks to the department for their work and for their interest in coming back and sharing information directly with the faculty, I'm sure it's appreciated. Thanks. Right. Thank well, you. thanks. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.